hello everyone welcome to this video today in this video we will be talking about the 14th lesson in your grade 7 science textbook heat and temperature now this lesson has been divided into several parts here we will be talking about your first subtopic measuring temperature now without further delay let us start off with the lesson now first and foremost before we start off with anything we must understand that when there is a warm climate we can feel it's very hot when it is cold we can feel that it's very cold now we are going to find out more about why we feel this coldness and why we feel this warmness what is the reason for this so we are going to do an activity in order to see why this is now over here we are going to do activity 14.1 and over here you can see this is our aim this is our aim find out more about warmness and coldness so for this practical we are going to need some lukewarm water that means slightly hot water and some cold water and of course two equal size beakers like you can see over here so what we are going to do here is we are going to simply take the two beakers like you can see over here fill one with lukewarm water and the other one with cold water once we are done filling the two beakers we are going to simply dip our hands in both the beakers then we are going to record our observation now over here you all can see the observation now this is a soft copy of your textbook i thought of teaching you all this lesson using the textbook because the textbook seems to be much more organized in this lesson and also i want you all to be familiarized with how to use the textbook where are the important points and what are the important points in each lesson that we have to study using our textbook now first and foremost what you must understand is your whole paper is made out of everything that's in the textbook normally they don't give anything that's out of the textbook because that will be considered as out of syllabus so we have to always stick to the textbook and when you go to higher grades we cannot solely depend on the notes of our teachers we have to make our own notes because not everyone will be providing us with notes so as a pre-preparation I thought of teaching this lesson using this a soft copy of your textbook so you all will have an idea as to how do you refer your textbook in a proper way and in a very organized way anyway coming back to the lesson you will be able to observe that there is a warmth in this beaker that had lukewarm water and over here you will be able to observe that you felt something very cold now you can do this practical at home also you can take two basins you can fill one with a little bit hot water not very hot but a bit hot water and the other one with cold water and you can dip your hands into them and you can get this observation you will notice oh, one beaker I feel it's hot the other one I feel it's cold so that's going to be your observation so then we can conclude now here you can see this over here is uh, the conclusion okay normally they in their textbook they mention what is the observation what is the conclusion but sometimes for an instance like this they don't directly tell what is the observation and conclusion you should read it understand it and then identify what is the observation what is the conclusion but now I am going to tell you all what are the observations aims and conclusions and where do you find them in the textbook anyway coming back to this you will be able to conclude that this beaker that had hot water okay that means lukewarm water you can't call this hot water because this is slightly warm it's not exactly hot water like hot water is normally something that's having a high temperature but this doesn't have a very high temperature but somewhat high temperature so that's why lukewarm water we call it slightly warm water okay so our conclusion is that water was warmed by receiving thermal energy or heat energy now 
you might have used when you were taking this lukewarm water you might have taken say some sort of a kettle and you must have heated the kettle with some water keeping it on the hot and then once you heated this you supplied heat to the kettle no so this heat that you supplied through the heart to the kettle is what we call as thermal or heat energy so this is what we call thermal or heat energy so that is how we got hot water so we can either let the hot water cool down and then we can get lukewarm water so you can pour it into a beaker and let it cool down a bit or otherwise you can add a bit of hot water and a bit of cold water to make it lukewarm water it's up to you so it's better to do this practical with adult supervision to prevent you all from like burning when you all heat this uh, the kettle with hot water so make sure there is some adult supervision when you do this okay now the next important thing is this heat the warmness or this coldness that we felt we felt here it was warm here it was warm the water was warm here the water was cold so this warmness or coldness that we feel we can measure it right we can measure it using some sort of a device we can measure it the best device we normally use is the thermometer no so we can measure this thing when we get the measurement of the coldness or the warmness of any substance we call it temperature this measurement is what we call as temperature now this is a very important thing to remember what is temperature now they have clearly defined it over here measurement of warmness or coldness of a substance is known as temperature okay this temperature is the measurement of warmness or coldness of any substance now if the temperature decreases if the temperature decreases that means it becomes cool no why because heat is lost when lost a substance cool now for an example when i took the example of boiling water i told we take a kettle and then we simply keep it on the hot we heat the water to get hot water no and then i told we can simply put it into a beaker and leave it so that it will become lukewarm now this we are putting hot water but if we leave it as it is for some time this hot water will turn into lukewarm water so why has the temperature now here the temperature has decreased so i'll be using this symbol for temperature here on out okay so temperature has decreased the reason for that is because now here to heat something for the temperature now here it was normal water no so what happened here is we gave thermal energy and here the temperature increased at first then we put the hot water into a beaker let it settle then what happened was the temperature decreased so temperature decrease means the thermal energy the thermal energy or heat energy has also decreased in other words heat has been lost heat was lost that's our conclusion whenever heat is lost the temperature decreases and whenever heat is gained temperature increases okay now another reason is now here we have a section called for extra knowledge normally the the government papers sometimes they question you all from this government school most of the papers sometimes they question you all but this is just for extra knowledge so it's nothing you should sort of like deeply understand and deeply keep in mind okay but just to like have a basic idea it's better to read this now here it says we feel warm when heat objects is being touched because heat transfers from that object to our hands and coldness is well felt when a piece of ice is touched because heat transfers from our hands to the piece of ice okay so this is kind of an interesting fact 
so here they are telling that when a heated object is touched heat is transferred from that object to our hands that's why we feel that something is hot so let's say there is this let's say the you have put the kettle on the fire i'll be always most for my most examples i'll be taking this common one that is normally used in day-to-day -day life okay and let's say you simply put your finger here and you touch this kettle then you must understand here the temperature of the kettle is high because thermal energy is supplied therefore temperature is high so then this heat this thermal energy i'll now from here on out i'll be representing heat by this symbol okay this is the symbol for heat that i'll be reusing so it's better to remember this because this will be useful in your upper grades okay so when heat is supplied uh, here the temperature increases and then this temperature will move into our hands the heat will move into our hands so that's when we feel that something is hot we feel warmness then okay we feel warm then so then let's take another one let's consider the instance where we have an ice cube okay just think of this as a cube of ice and then you're simply going to touch this ice cube now when you're touching this ice cube okay you will notice that heat is transferred from your hand into the ice because the human body has a certain temperature which we will be discussing when we move on with this lesson in this video or in the next anyway there is a certain temperature and ice normally has a temperature of 0 degrees celsius our body has something almost around 36 degrees celsius so then heat is transferred from our body into the ice so that's why we lose heat no so we are losing heat we lose heat so when we lose heat the temperature is going to decrease therefore we are going to feel coldness cold okay so those are some important things now we are going to do a practical to find out how to measure temperature correctly this is something really important and over here this is our aim as well okay to find out how to measure temperature correctly now to do this practical we are going to need two small glass bottles with a rubber stopper now here you can see up over here this blue colored ones they are the rubber stoppers they are the ones that are fixed into these glass bottles and we are going to need two empty pen tubes and we are also going to need two beakers over here you can see these are the two beakers and of course we need some water and some red ink here you can see red ink has been used over here that's why it's red ink color so we are going to fill these small glass bottles with colored water we are going to take some water we are going to add some red ink into it and we are going to fill these glass bottles with that colored water then we are going to insert this pen tubes okay and we are also making sure that it's sealed by these rubber stoppers so these rubber stoppers are going to prevent air from entering from outside of these things outside this setup okay it's going to prevent air from entering uh, from out to in and certain substances from moving from in to out from inside to outside and it's only giving the passage of substances from one place and that is over here as you can see this gap in the tube now what's happening here is once we do this practical once we fill these uh, two glass bottles with colored ink connect the stopper and we fix the tube pins uh, tubes of the pins we are going to place these two glass bottles in two beakers and fill one beaker with warm water the other beaker with cold water once we do this we are going to take our observation so how do you get warm water the best way to get warm water is by simply boiling some water 
and then putting the boiled water into a beaker and adding a little cold water and getting lukewarm water otherwise you can simply take some boiled water and leave it be for some time okay anyway keeping that in mind we are going to carry out this practical and then we can do this and we will get a certain interesting observation and this observation is clearly stated over here like I mentioned earlier sometimes they give us a direct message that this is the observation sometimes they do not so here you can see the observation now over here according to this if we do this practical we will be able to observe that the liquid column in the tube with warmer water rises up so here you get warmer water this is the tube column so this column of water will rise considerably up it will rise up to here it will rise up whereas the cold water now here it's somewhere over here no it will fall down it will fall down here the water column will rise up here the water column will fall down it will go down here it will rise up okay so what happens here is now this is our conclusion okay we can conclude this particular fact using that yeah okay so anyway what happens here is that heat in this warm water is transferred into this bottle and then this volume of water in the bottle increases the volume of water increases and as the volume of water increases this will move up that is our conclusion and the other thing over here is the water in the bottle kept in this beaker with cold water cools that means here water might go out no? from the bottle it might go out into the beaker so here the bottle cools and therefore the volume of water decreases volume of water decreases and therefore this water level drops down okay so that's something really important we must remember so the increase of volume of a liquid by gaining heat is what we call as expansion of liquid so let's say that this is a beaker it has some liquid okay this is some liquid okay now if some heat is supplied heat if you simply supply some heat to this beaker and this liquid level the volume of this liquid rises due to the gaining of heat we call it expansion of liquid volume of this particular liquid is increased due to getting of heat that is what we call as expansion of liquid now this is what is really important in thermometers this is the mechanism behind thermometers okay and using this expansion of liquids we make thermometers Okay, so with that we have completed the first subtopic of this lesson. So, hope you all understood the lesson and enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to click on the like button, subscribe if you are new and share this my channel with your friends. So, get ready for part 2 and stay tuned. Until next time, bye.